Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to another lecture of Selenium with C Sharp. And in this lecture, we are going to be talking about implementing automatic retry of web elements in Selenium with C Sharp.net. So there is no automatic retry feature available other than what is called as an implicit weight or explicit weight or maybe fluent weight that you have got. But other than that, you don't really have like an automatic weighting mechanism which Playwright has got. So if you know that Playwright has got something called as automatic retry of any of the elements that you have got, it automatically does things for you. But over here in Selenium, we don't really have unless until we add those implicit weight or explicit weight for each and every single element or maybe entirety of the whole uh, uh, operation that we are trying to do. But what if we wanted to implement what is called as a retry mechanism within our Selenium, like what uh, the uh, the playwright or cypress like all these automation testing tool does that's what we are going to be discussing in this particular lecture and again this particular lecture and the few lectures that i have talked about in selenium c sharp already are already available as a course in my udemy so if you just go to udemy over here you can see that it has got all the details for working with the basics of selenium with c sharp .net and how you can set up everything from the scratch and how you can work with different options and things so everything is available in this course but at least this particular lecture that you are seeing over here is part of the particular uh, course and you'll also notice that uh, this particular lecture i'm going to be breaking down even further for that particular course so that you can understand things in even more deeper fashion but at least for you if you have already got some idea of how you can work with selenium c sharp .net in an advanced level this lecture is going to be making you more sense because it's going to be very very straightforward and again how are we going to implement this retriable mechanism we are going to be using what is called as a poly.net this is an, another library which is very cool library to perform like retrying mechanism and circuit break and a lot of different things within itself it is mainly used for development purpose and we are going to be using this development purpose library for our automation testing and i will show you how we can use that so if you just go to google and if you just search for poly uh, .net, uh, and you'll see that this is the website that you end with the github website of the poly and you will see that this poly is a .net resilience and transient fault handling library that allows developer to express resilience strategy such as uh, retry, circuit break, hedging, timeout, uh, rate limiting, fallback in a fluent and threat safe manner. That is the most important thing that it's all done using threat safe manner so that you don't really have to worry about like how the threading is going to be taken care and stuff. That is pretty good. Uh, most importantly, you'll also notice that they have got quite a lot of different uh, documentation available over here for how you can work with the different strategies like the uh, retry family, circuit breaker family, fallback and hedgings. So you can, if you wanted to go with a specific kind of waiting mechanism, you can go and choose them or not. You can directly go with a retry mechanism directly over here and then you can see that the retry mechanisms are going to be done using these big code. Well, you don't really have to go through this bigger option that you are seeing over here. Rather, we are going to see what is the better and easiest way that we can do with within our Selenium code. So in order for you to understand how these things can be implemented, I'm going to be opening up the code that we have been already discussing within my course in Selenium with C -sharp .net, which is available in Udemy. And I've also covered them in the uh, YouTube channel, uh, like this playlist as you are seeing over here on the top of this particular playlist. All the video that we have discussed so far is uh, all the code that you are seeing over here some of them are part of this particular uh, series as well so you can just easily follow along from there you don't really have to purchase the existing course if you wanted to so if you see that this particular code that you are seeing over here is uh, something that i have just created right now uh, it's also not available in the course uh, at the moment but you will notice that this code is going to be doing a test with a wait and retry this is not currently doing at the moment it is just doing a uh, login operation it's going to do an explicit wait over here uh, and you can see that it is going to be performing the send key operation so if it's going to wait until the usernames or uh, the element does exist in the UI. If it doesn't exist, then it is going to fail. That is what it is going to be doing over here for this uh, testing operation. And I'll quickly show you how this code actually works. So if I try to run this particular code over here right now, it opens a browser, it performs a login operation, it enters the username and the password, uh, I mean, even the username, it can't be entered because the, uh, the element for the username text box, I have made it fail uh, like just 
explicitly so that I can see that there is going to be an exception over here. And there is a timeout period of like 10 seconds and that's the reason why it fails immediately after 10 seconds. That's what is happening over here. But once I go and change the username to usernames, something like this, and if I try to run this test, it is just going to for work as expected. That is what this particular code is doing it for you over here. But now we are going to see how we can perform the retrying mechanism using the poly.net library that I was talking about. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to uh, dependency over here, hit this manage NuGet package, and I'm going to search for uh, poly, and you will see that this is the library which is going to be coming up for you, the poly library. So I'm going to install it within my project, the selenium.net. You can either hit this plus button or click the uh, option and hit enter to install the poly.net over here. That's going to install the library for you. That's the only setup that we need to do in order for making the retriable mechanism within our code. And once we have it, the thing which I'm going to do this time is I'm going to get rid of these things immediately from here go away and now we, i don't even wanted to have this big code but i want to simplify this coding as much as uh, possible so in order to do that i'm gonna uh, cut this code paste it over here get rid of this one and i'm gonna make uh, or name this as txt username uh, that's all but now i want to implement a retrying mechanism for this user names which i'm trying to make it uh, wrong so that the retry kick in so here is where i'm going to add the retry mechanism uh, with poly right so how do i actually do that well in order for my, me to write this particular code i'm just going to say var retry policy so i'm just going to make um, a variable as var retry policy and over here i'm going to call a policy abstract class this one and if I hit dot, you will see that there's going to be a bunch of options comes in over here for you. And one of the uh, builder method that I want to use is the handle method. And as I told you, the policy is a fluent library as well. So it's just pretty much like how you do write the code in a fluent manner. You can do that as well. And before I actually do that, guess what? I wanted to show you some of the uh, errors that you always encounter while there is no UI element appears on the particular uh, UI and what Selenium compliance for you. And the Selenium complains that there is no such element exceptions or there is something called as a stale element exception. These are the two common exceptions which happens if the UI doesn't really exist uh, in the place that you are looking for. And that's what we want to handle uh, in the uh, retry policy as well. And this is exactly what we have discussed even before while we were discussing about the uh, the explicit uh, weight where you can also ignore the exception types like no such element exception same thing we wanted to do over here as well in the uh, in the poly but just that we wanted to retry once there is that exception not ignoring that exception completely but to retry if that exception happens uh, so i'm going to say no such element exception if there is an exception like no such element exception or if there is going to be a uh, uh, stale element uh, reference exception. So if you get any of these exceptions, I mean, you can see that you can keep on uh, writing this in a fluent manner, something like that. This is pretty cool. And if any of these doesn't happen, uh, if any of these happen, then you can do a wait and retry. Uh, but this code is written for me automatically by this uh, this tab nine. So I'm not going to write that. Rather, I'm just going to write it, hand code it. So I'm going to say wait and retry. Uh, and I'm over here, I'm going to specify the um, uh, the retry count. So I'm going to say retry count as maybe if I want to retry for like four times, I can do that. I can, I can bring this retry count from a config file or something like that so that we can even remove this hard coding of the policy settings for the uh, for the poly.net from a separate file if I wanted to I can do that uh, and then I also need to set the uh, sleep duration provider as the uh, retry uh, provider or something like that like that oops try provider uh, which is going to be um, like a 
time span and I'm going to set it for uh, like I want to retry until like probably three seconds or maybe five seconds depend on how I wanted to do it. Uh, and once I have this one, I also wanted to set the retry like on retry uh, mechanism. And this on retry, I wanted to do uh, like a time span as well if I wanted to. So I can set over here. So I can write a block of code over here, like how I wanted to set the on retry mechanism. This is where I'm gonna set the uh, console dot write line, uh, something like retrying, uh, and I can set the attempt over here. Um, and I can say uh, retry and also I can set the exception with uh, exception and I can set the exception message something like this. Yeah, this is pretty cool. So retrying is going to show me the attempt, like how many times I'm trying to wait for this particular uh, element to appear. And then I'm, I'm going to show an exception if there happens any exception and that exception with this exception message. So that's what I'm going to be storing over here. This is the this is the retry policy or retry policy with poly that I am setting over here. And once I build this entire policy, I can then execute this policy against what I'm trying to do, which is nothing but I wanted to execute this retry policy. You see that it automatically brings that code. Tab9 is quite smart. It tells me what I need to do next. So it's gonna say retry policy dot execute. And over here on this execute block, uh, I can perform certain action. And that action is nothing but this finding of the element, which I can put it over here. I can actually return this one uh, out from it. And then I can grab this as the txt username variable like that so that I can get rid of this line of code. Something like this. I can do this one or even further to reduce the number of lines of code. I can get rid of this into a Lambda expression in just one line of code like this. You see that now the, the thing is, if you see the code with the, with the explicit weight, you have to do quite a lot of things over here, right? But with a retry mechanism, you can just end up writing a very, very super simple line of code, which is going to be just like one line of code. If you have this, policy building in a separate method. You can even move this policy building to a separate method if you wanted to. So you can refactor this to a uh, method uh, and you can see that it's a retry policy or whatever uh, and just hit it next and you see that we have a retry policy into a separate method. So now you see that this is gonna be a method which is gonna be sitting completely differently isolated from the code that you are trying to write. So that is also another way of you to uh, reduce the number of lines of code. So only thing you have to now bother about is gonna be this execute method, that's all. And once you have this, now that should do a retry for the particular element for you uh, while you try to identify that element. So let's try to run this code and see what is gonna basically happen. So I have made that identifier as false, like a wrong identifier. You see that now Selenium is automatically retrying. I mean, this poly is trying to retry for you for three seconds uh, and four times and it has failed this time finally. This is pretty much the exact same behavior like uh, like what Playwright or Cypress does. And we have uncovered that uh, within our own Selenium using the poly.net. You see that we have a retrying attempt one with exception, no such element. That is amazing. You are seeing an attempt one and you also get an exception, unable to locate the element, blah, blah, blah. And it keeps on doing retrying for attempt two, attempt three, attempt four. Essentially what you have done right now is you have built your own custom retrying mechanism, pretty much like what Playwright does. And I don't know what Playwright does under the hood. Maybe they use the same way of doing it, but we have did the exact same thing with Selenium as well. And this is how you can implement the retrying mechanism in Selenium with C Sharp in much, much easier fashion. And now you may ask like, Karthik, can we do the exact same with the uh, with a page object model code? You could do that as well. And I have already a 
code ready for you to show for the page object model code as well like this so i have a login page with a retry this is the exact same code like exact except that i have brought a retrying mechanism over here and you can see that i am using the a retry find element method instead of the find element method of the uh, selenium but this method basically what it does is it is going to be doing a, a retry like the same thing like what we have done over here but just that there is going to be an execute method inside this particular retry and find element it's like a wrapper basically and you can see that i'm passing in the driver object on the base class which is going to be the retry base and this retry base is going to grab the web driver element it's going to perform the execution operation for you over here to find the element uh, or retry for that element and then it's going to do things for you so now if there is any failure even with the uh, model code you can also find that so in, in an ideal world this is how the code is going to look like like driver dot find element by blah 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 this is how you write the the model code right but just that in the uh, login page with retry you will see that we will just call this method retry find element which is going to do all those magics for you and if you really wanted to see how this thing implementation I have done, I can also show you like a walkthrough in a different video, but at least I don't see a point for you to show you because if you are quite familiar with how these things are done, it's very straightforward, you can do it. Uh, but if not, you can just go ahead and do it yourself or maybe just let me know. We can also implement that in the next lecture uh, and I can go through with you. But you can see that this code is going to do the retry mechanism for you automatically in the page object model code so now if i try to run this test you will notice that this test is going to run it enters the username but it won't enter the password because it is going to do a retry for the password element to appear in the ui and it fails and it's going to show you the error if it can which unfortunately is not showing here let me try to run it again the log is not coming so if i do it again uh, you will notice that it is just going to keep running and it's going to show you the the errors for you over here so this is how uh, you can see that we can build the uh, the retrying mechanism within our uh, selenium test uh, using the poly.net in much much easier fashion hope that makes sense and this is how we can achieve it uh, catch you in the next one where we can talk even more spicy way of working with Selenium and bringing in more external libraries within our code. Thank you.